this module I'm going to teach you about the new effects in Reason 6. All of the devices combine elements of effects already taught on the course, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get up to speed with these. I'll start with Pulverizer, which is a compressor with distortion and filtering that allows you to create all sorts of fat and funky sounds. I've added Pulverizer to Kong in the rack, which has a hip-hop break played using various note clips on a few different lanes in the sequencer. On the front panel of the effect, the two main sections are on the left, those being the compressor and distortion units, named Squash and Dirt, respectively. Then the multi-mode filter section. Then, next to these, you have the tremor and follower sections. These are basically an envelope and LFO, which can be used to modulate different parameters on the front panel. Then, at the end, you've got the master output control, and below this, a dry-wet dial, which is a first on a compressor in Reason. This means that you can set up the parallel compression effect, as shown earlier in the course, without having to use a return channel on the mixer, and can just add the effect as an insert to any device in the rack instead. Now we've added Pulverizer to Kong then, setting up parallel compression is easy. You just turn up the squash dial, which controls the threshold, ratio and output gain controls of the compressor. Listen to the sound when I turn up the dial to around halfway. You can hear the drums become much flatter, with only the initial transients sounding very briefly at the start, as the compressor's attack time is nice and fast. Of course, this does make the level a fair bit lower though, as the compressor's gain reduction circuit is taking effect. Then, the release time of the compressor can be adjusted using the dial below. This also has a big effect on the compression. Increasing the release makes the drums stay compressed for longer, so the sound is less affected, and basically just turned down the whole time. Whereas, setting a shorter release means that the signal level is coming back up more regularly, creating the pumping effect and a much fuller and more dynamic sound. The distortion section alongside can be used to beef up the drums even more by rotating the dirt dial to increase the amount of distortion and then using the dial below to set the tone, which is basically the cutoff frequency of a low pass filter. So rotating the dial in an anti clockwise direction lowers the cutoff and so cuts out more of the high frequencies. Setting the dirt dial about halfway adds a nice amount of distortion, which is pretty subtle but fattens up the drums in a pleasing way whereas turning it up to max totally annihilates the signal by distorting the hell out of it. The blend dial can now be used to bring some of the dry signal back in, so you can set a blend of compressed and uncompressed drums, therefore creating parallel compression within the insert effect itself. The filter section alongside is very similar to many we've seen on the course so far, so I'm not going to spend too long looking at that. You've got your standard filter types, as well as a comb filter, all selectable using the switch, 
with a bypass option at the top if you don't want to use the filter. And then the frequency and resonance of those filters are controlled using the two dials below. Remember that in comb filter mode, the frequency and resonance of the filter are actually the size and feedback of the delay, respectively, as we've seen on previous synths. One cool thing here is that you can move the filter so that it comes before the compressor and distortion circuit, if you like, by adjusting the switch setting as follows. Moving on to the modulators then. Again, we've looked at these before on other devices, so there's not much new stuff here. You've got an envelope section at the bottom and an LFO at the top. The follower works by analysing the waveform and generating a modulation signal governed by the threshold setting that then modulates its target parameter using the attack and release settings. In other words, when the input signal goes over the threshold, a CV modulation signal is generated, causing the follower to modulate whatever it's controlling by an amount set with the modulation amount dials and with a speed controlled by its attack and release. So to demonstrate this, I'll just set the effect back to fully wet. Then if we want to create a cool filter effect, we might set the filter to low pass and then reduce the cutoff to remove the high frequencies. Then, to apply the envelope modulation using the follower section, we just turn up the modulation amount dial here, which will bring back the higher frequencies on each drum hit. The threshold level sets how often a modulation signal is generated. So if we raise it, then you'll only get the higher frequencies coming back in when the loudest drums sound, and not when every drum hit does. So you don't get every hi-hat raising the filter frequency, but only the kicks and snares. However, you can slow down the speed that the filter frequency falls back down by increasing the release amount so that the envelope is extended. The tremor section, meanwhile, offers an LFO with a host of different waveforms and the usual synced or free rate options that can be used to modulate the filter frequency once again or the volume of the wet signal. For example, you could use either the downward exponential curve with the volume modulation dial set in the maximum negative position or the upward sawtooth waveform with the dial set in the maximum positive position to both create a similar effect to a ducking compressor. You just need to set the speed to a synced rate of 1 over 4, then the level will drop at the start of every beat to create the more dynamic sound. This is obviously better on bass lines and synth parts than beats. An alternative to this is to use an unsynced rate. This allows you to go much faster with the LFO. At these higher speeds, you get a tone produced by the rapid oscillation, the pitch of which increases as the oscillation gets faster. With these settings, it's actually easier to demonstrate the other follower modulation option, which allows it to modulate the tremor rate as you can clearly hear what's going on. For example, if I turn up the dial so that the follower is modulating the tremor rate by a reasonable amount in an upwards direction, and then turn up the follower threshold so it's not generating modulation signals as often, then you'll hear you get the pitch being created by the tremor section's rapid oscillation of the output volume going up and down on the loudest drum sounds, according to the timing of the attack and release dials here.
having a comb filter option, which as you know is actually a delay, and being able to modulate it with the tremor section also means you can create a host of different effects with pulverizer, ranging from a flanger when the rate is slow and the delay time is going up and down audibly, to a similar crazy effect if you have a fast rate and modulate it with the follower as well. And the last two controls in the tremor section are spread, which adds a phase offset of 180 degrees to the LFO in the left and right channels, creating a nice stereo effect, and lag, which smooths the LFO's effect, making the modulation glide instead of jump. So you can hear with this last instance of pulverizer that we've got some pretty mental, almost synthesized sounds being created by the drums. I've also used the tremor section to create a subtler, tuned melodic flanging effect on the device above. Have a play around with these different instances using the bypass switch to activate them one at a time to hear the range of sounds being made. Now I'm going to move on to the second new effect, the echo. <laughs> 